Hello and welcome to the Interval training series. In this video, we're going to focus on Interval Tools. Interval Tools is a separate component that we sell, but is also included with all other Interval components. We'll begin with a project that has two rasters. The first one is shown here, which is topography for an area of gold mining called the Coal Basin. And the second is a pit that we intend to excavate into this mine. And so one of the quick questions that might be asked is, what is the volume of that pit intersecting the terrain? Now with interval, you could actually model that geology and as a 3D volumetric model, but with interval tools alone, we can build a closed multi-patch of that pit intersecting the topography and compute the volume of the intersection. So let's begin. Once we have two rasters and interval installed, this tool, the raster of volume, is active. We select it and it will choose our two rasters. If there's more, it will give us a choice of choosing between them. And the key thing is we have to decide which is the top and which is the bottom. In some cases, you can have rasters that intersect and go above and below each other. So you might want to do some analysis where one is the top and the other is the top. In this case, it's very obvious we want the ground surface, which is CBDEM, to be the top of the volume we compute. And we want the clipped mine pit, which is, has a mask on it, to be the bottom. And so the defaults that it comes up with here are correct. The only other things I'm going to change, because I've got a high resolution grid in both cases, I'm going to bump up the resolution of the multi-patch to be 300 by 300. And because it's a little more accurate, I'm going to choose the bicubic interpolation option. The only thing left to do is to specify where we want to write this multi-patch out. And it normally will go into a geodatabase. So we're going to put it here in the geodatabase that we have. And we're going to call it uh, pit volume. And we're ready to go. Now once we hit OK, it will start giving us some feedback down here at the bottom. that It's creating a volume from our rasters. And building that geometry and it's about halfway done with that stage of the process. Now it's building the multi-patch. Now it says multi-patches because again two intersecting rasters can result in multiple volumes and we're done. It's finished. That's pretty quick. Let's take a look at what we have. I'm going to turn off both of these for now. And here is our multi-patch. Now this is with a vertical scale of one. So we'll bump that up just so we can see it a little better. Now a multi-patch is a single object, so it can't be colored by elevation. It's a hollow shell. In order for it to be used for volumetric analysis, it must be properly constructed and closed. We can verify that ours is closed, and they will be when you're using our software. So go to the Arc Toolbox, and under 3D Analyst Tools, under 3D Features, one of the questions is, one of the things that it does for us is, is closed. So we can ask it, is this closed? We choose our multi-patch. And off we go. Now it takes a while for this to run. It has to analyze it. And this is not a necessary step because you can trust that our multi patches will be closed. But if you want to verify this, and we will using the SRI tools, we let this tool run. It takes a while. And when it completes, it's going to pop up a window and saying that is closed is complete. Now, this isn't telling us for sure that it is closed. It's just that. The analysis of whether it's closed is complete. Once that happens, if we look at the attribute table, one of the items that is now added is whether it is closed, and you can see that it is. The answer is yes. All right. Again, we could have passed on this step. The more important step here is to add Z information. So we'll again choose our multi-patch, 
And we want most of these things. Most of the items here do apply to a multi-patch. Slope calculations do not, so there's no point in doing those. And we go ahead and have this run. Again, you can see down here in the right corner scrolling that it's adding Z information. And it will give us another little window as it just did when it's finished. At this point, we're basically done. And we can look here again at the attribute table. And now in our attribute table, we have that it's closed. It is a multi-patch. Um, we have the mean and max, the min, mean, and max Z coordinate, the surface area, and the volume. And that volume is a large number. This site is in feet. It's USGS coordinates. So it is 213,638,762,000 cubic feet. A fifth of a trillion cubic feet involved in this pit. Very large pit. All right, so while we're here, let's just do a couple more things with interval tools. We could jump in and throw axes on this model. And when we do, let's go back over here to the scene control and zoom out, zoom to fit. When we do throw axes, notice that it's going to throw axes around the entire set of objects that are in the table of contents. So when I turn those back on, you can see that the axes extent was nice for those objects. But if I just want to look at my volume, I could delete these or I could just jump in here and change the properties on axes. And under spatial definition, I can select the extents and choose what objects to use in building the extents. Once I do this, it's going to put axes around just my volume that I'm interested in here. Isn't that slick? And again, as we change the scale, notice that uh, our numbers get compressed, and all we have to do to fix that is just refresh the axes, and the numbers are cleaned up. So let's go back and turn on our other surfaces. And we can put axes again, build another axis. So we're going to have an axis that goes around the whole model. And then we've got an interior axis. We can turn it off, the first one. But when we want it, it's there. It's kind of slick. And the last thing we want to demonstrate is our, is our direction indicator. So we click on that, and it shows us our north arrow. If you uh, want to change properties, we have a few different options. You can position it wherever you like, but I always like this compass rose instead of the north arrow. And so let's go with that. All right, and I think that if we were to make this ground surface transparent, that would give us an interesting look to be able to see our pit, that we have a volume residing inside of it. We have all the properties for the volume among the attributes for that multi-patch. And we have a properly closed multi-patch created between two rasters of different extents and resolutions. Thank you for watching this episode of Interval Training Series.